Welcome back to CultureCast, episode 12, uh, all FIBA today. Nothing really around the league uh, that I've seen. I don't – have you Have you seen anything? No? Not or... um, not really anything, man. No. It's been pretty slow after the day, after the JaVale McGee and Svee signings. Yeah. Nothing too much. Yeah, so pretty chill around the league at the moment. But uh, FIBA is really getting rolling. We're through the group stage now, and we're officially into the quarterfinals. There are eight teams yeah. remaining, and that's what the video is going to be about. Uh, had a headache yesterday, pretty big one. Uh, so we did not record, and that would have been where we do the uh, group three or round three, essentially, uh, of the games from uh, from the group stage. But at this point, it's kind of useless. The quarterfinal games are about to get played in the morning. So uh, we're going to go over the remainder of the elimination. So not all the teams that have been eliminated, but the teams that we haven't already talked about that have not been eliminated Uh, And then we're going to go into all the final games uh, and the records, power rankings, some stats for the teams that are left and then their current upcoming games for the quarterfinals. So uh, probably going to be a lot, but this is like where we're starting to really get into the thick of it. Um, So it should be fun. I hope everyone enjoys and we'll get right into it with the remainder of the eliminations Uh, where we're picking up uh, last week. Yeah, um, there was quite a few and a lot of interesting eliminations here that uh, because, again, we talked so much about how the the group structure of this tournament is very funky. Yeah, um, I'm looking at a lot of teams here that I think we would both agree are like, ooh, they're eliminated. Yeah, uh, I think the two biggest ones being Spain and Australia. Big time. Um, so we'll just get we'll just go right through them and then Dom will let you get rolling on a, on some of, you know, some of the weird eliminations or or things you see, but we've got Australia eliminated Montenegro. It's Nikola Vucevic, Dominican Republic, Japan, Cape Verde, Georgia, South Sudan, Puerto Rico, Greece, Brazil, New Zealand, Ivory coast, and Spain. Those are the final eliminations. The remaining teams left for the quarterfinals, United States, Canada, Germany, Serbia, Lithuania, Slovenia, Italy, interesting, and Latvia. Yeah. There uh and then there were eight. So Yeah, literally, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah. A lot of eliminations, um a lot of interesting ones, but we just prefaced Australia and Spain. What are your thoughts on them not making the cut? Dude, yeah. I mean, you had Spain coming in, Australia, Spain, both ranked 5 coming in. Yeah. You see them both gone. I personally thought Spain would have went a little farther than this. I am a little surprised they're already out because they were ranked two just a few weeks ago or three just a few weeks ago. One of the strongest teams in the the whole tournament. I this is a this is usually like a, a round where you trim the fat off. And I'm looking at it, there's a lot of good teams still like that just got eliminated. Yeah. Like Montenegro is not the greatest, very solid team. You have obviously New Zealand, they put up a decent fight. I was a lot. I was a lot more surprised. We're having no NBA talent, yeah. And then DR, another team I'm kind of surprised by, man. They they came in, they looked tough the whole tournament, and just they kind of not fell apart, but they they, I think they started to catch up to them playing the better teams that I would say so in the tournament. And but aside from that, yeah, the most of these teams, I it it makes sense to me. I'm not very surprised seeing Brazil, very solid team making to the second round. Not surprised seeing Greece without Giannis. It's expected. I'm surprised they made it this far, to be honest. And just to see like Puerto Rico, who I think will be on the rise in the next upcoming FIBA tournament. They're a very solid team, but all, all the, a lot of these teams, it makes sense. And I'm not I'm, the only two I'm very surprised by are those two. But also Japan, very solid team from what I from what I watched and seeing what they did against Finland, they they made a pretty solid statement. So it's not too surprising by most of these teams. Only those two I'd be really surprised by. More so Spain. I really thought they were one of my favorites to maybe go all the way this tournament. Yeah, Spain and Australia definitely felt like finalist teams, uh, at least yeah. final eight. Uh, yes, to see not to see them in the quarterfinals is pretty crazy, mm-hmm. um, especially because they're both such talented teams. Um, and I think we were mentioning last week, Spain won the last uh, the last tournament, right? Yeah, they're again, like you said, they're typically a team that's gonna make it. And yeah. I, I think the biggest thing to me, looking at all of this, is how on earth Italy made it. 
over yeah. those two teams. No yeah. shade to Italy. Italy no is a solid country. They're, they're solid, yeah. Yeah, but, especially no, for overseas surprise. ball. It's a surprise, man, because they're a, yeah. they're a very – not like you mentioned, they're not bad. They're just kind of a middle of the pack, maybe a little bit above middle of the pack, but even then they're not the greatest basketball country. And they, they have – do they have zero NBA talent as of right now? Or they have two players, right? It was uh, mm. Cole and Melly, right? Isn't it Melly and someone X, else? X, yeah, X NBA yeah, player. X and, yeah, but aside um, from that, yeah. Yeah. yeah the NBA talent from them, man. So that's kind of a, a big surprise coming out of them. And, hey, they – Keep going. I can't hate on them, man. I mean, no, yeah, it's yeah. It, it is crazy. Again, just the structure of all this is is very interesting. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm uh, with you on that one, man. That's it is a very weird structure, and it's kind of complicated at times. Yeah, uh, another team, and we talked about them quite a bit. Uh, that really intrigued me is South Sudan. That's a team yeah. where I'm really looking forward to watching them in the future. And again, once more, I just shout out to Carly Jones for yeah. absolutely going crazy. Um, I've said it so many times now. I really hope to see this dude in the league this season. Uh, I think he's earned a spot. He's absolutely killed it in this tournament. So yeah, um, big, big, uh, big games for him. But like we did last weekend, man, congrats to all the teams for even making it in the first place. Um, congrats for showing up. And uh, I think all of these teams have the ability to just continuously improve uh, oh, yeah. as basketball spreads uh, overseas further and further, um, you know, the more competitive, the better. So, uh, so hope to see, uh, hope to see all these teams back in, but uh, we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes of this entire thing. And that is going to be the final game and record for the remaining eight teams, including team statistics. And to open that up, we wanted to go over just closing out kind of the group stage points, leaders, and just statistical leaders in general for the first few rounds uh, and, uh, you know, you brought them up. I think it's pretty clear. We all know who the number one guy is so far. No question. It's Luka Doncic. Uh, I, he's pretty <laughs> much leading most categories, uh, oh, yeah. points per game currently in first with 26 and a half points per game. Uh, yeah. second behind is Jordan Clarkson with 26, uh, and third, Climbing, who had a kind of slow start, but just really ramped it up, is Larry Markinen with 25 points. Uh, are there any names on that top 10 list that kind of shock you or you're intrigued by? Let me pull it up. Um, oh, Hawkinson. That's that's guy. He's been kind of – he had my eye the whole tournament so far. He's been killing yeah. it. And we mentioned him last video. Guy's a rebounding monster right now. And no, I mean, all these guys make sense. Tremont Waters, he had a huge game, huge Puerto game, Rico, yeah. huge game the other day. So I'm not, no, none of these guys necessarily surprise me. Um, no, no, nah, top 10 looks pretty, pretty like you'd expect. I see Rondé, uh, he's been killing it. Shout uh, out Rondé, man, backpacking, backpacking Jordan. Killing yeah. Cat killing it, marketing, killing it, Clarkson, killing it. They've all, all these guys have been putting in a lot of work, so I, I I'm not really surprised by any of these guys. I guess just uh, no, no. These guys, these these all make sense from what I from what I've watched. These all make pretty a good amount of sense. Yeah, uh, we'll get into assist leaders next. Leading the leading FIBA in assists, ten and a half a game for Carleek Jones for South Sudan. Dude, twenty and ten for Carleek. Come on, man. Come on, I'm telling you, bro. This Yo. dude is nasty. He's killing it, man. He's nasty. Tremont Waters, second place with nine assists a game. Uh, Shea Lee for New Zealand. Congrats to him. Third place with seven and a half assists. Uh, shockingly, Luca only at seven. Um, yeah, I thought Luca would be leading the pack because it would. I thought it was going to be everyone's just going to crowd Luca, force the ball into <laughs> someone else's hands. So there's a lot of dump offs. So far, yeah, that's been an interesting yeah i don't know he's i don't know yeah I, I would think they would like rush him a lot more and blitz him but like yeah just get the ball out of his hands yeah, but I, good things happen when he has it so yeah and we talked about it uh before the tournament even started like uh, you know i hope that doesn't happen i i assume it will because teams want to win but i really hope because that's just bad for i know it's bad for basketball you don't no, want to watch I, luca just get rid of the ball every time you know I I think when he plays probably one of the top tier teams, that's probably what they're going to have to do though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It sucks. Cause you know, it's just like, 
if you're trying to attract new fans to basketball, I know Luca's so fun to watch because he's so unorthodox. Um, yeah, we'll get into rebounds next. Oh, uh, yeah, leading a- the pack, Eddie yeah. Tavares for yeah. Cape Verde. Wow. Uh, shout out to him, averaging 12 and a half per game, crazy, uh, and about 30 minutes, uh, leading by eight rebounds total at 62. Uh, in second place, Josh Hawkinson. Man, we've yeah. talked about him quite a bit. Dude. Yeah. Killer for Japan, man. He had that 25 and 19 game in round two of the group stage. So, I mean, he's been absolutely on one. Um, also, shout out to Jonas Valanciunas and Nikola Vucevic for being on here. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rudy Gobert bringing in some NBA uh, NBA guys. And Bruno yeah. Cavalco, nine yeah, and Bruno, a half man. a game. Dang, nine. Yeah. Crazy. I wonder if he'll make a, he'll make a league comeback. He kind of disappeared after his first stint so uh we'll yeah. see if he can make it back in uh blocks i did want to get Ooh, into blocks and steals a little wow. bit leading the pack wenyan gabriel wow. and i think that's pretty pretty big yeah. mostly because wenyan gabriel had an interesting period with the lakers mm-hmm. uh and it's hard to say that he made a name for himself yeah. But at the same time, I think he showed to be a very solid backup big and a, just a quality role player in this league. Uh, so it's interesting that, you know, we're currently seeing... He's unsigned, right? Yeah, he did not get picked up yet. Wow. Uh, it's interesting to great. see him leading the FIBA tournament in blocks per game at two and a half. Dude, uh, yeah. And he's not even... He's, what, a power forward, realistically. Yeah, he's, he's only like six, seven, six, eight. power forward, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy, man. Yeah, especially seeing like Rudy down there. I mean, yeah, hey, Yuta too, man. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, you right there. At five. <laughs> One of the Warriors channels I watch, uh, Athletic Alchemy, he like when Yuta was uh, currently when Yuta was unsigned before he went to Phoenix. Uh, Yuta was one of the guys a lot of Warriors fans were hoping uh, that would be a target. And one of the big things is he's like actually a solid defender. Yeah, you wouldn't expect it. And one of the reasons is because it's like. I mean, how many times have I seen? Have you seen that guy get postered? A ton, <laughs> because he just yeah. refuses to back down. Like he'll go up against anyone, and that's you know, a lot of guys avoid that smoke, but Yuta wants oh, all of it. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I, I can't. Yeah, that's very respectful. Just putting in the effort. I mean, yeah, it is a highlight play, but <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's 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 just awesome to see. It's a lot of guys kind of refuse to do that, so. Yeah, uh, to yeah. to see him kind of put that effort in is it's nice to see. Uh, leading in the steals category, we got a two way tie with Tremont Waters and Aheb Amin for Egypt. So shout out Egypt, yeah, helping lead the way in a in steals there. Shockingly, number three being Luka, Luka. Doncic. Wow. Yeah, wow. Hey, number yeah. five too. Bogdan Bogdanovich, oh, man. man. They, these are these guys, man. They tell you they go to this tournament, man. They just they turn up. Yeah. The yeah. steals category is always hilarious. It's like yeah. James Harden won a steals, uh, won a steals uh, award for leading the league in steals in like what 2016, 17, 18, one of those years. Yeah, and then was it was it Curry in 15, 16 when he Curry got, won one when he got the unanimous. Yeah, he was steals leader. It's so funny because these do like they're not like Steph is an improved defender. Harden oh, yeah. has never been a great defender. And Steph at this point still isn't even that great a defender. Good offense. Um, yeah, he's a good team defender. Um, yeah. Harden, I just at no point has that dude ever been good. Even when there was like peak Rockets, yeah, no. he was a liability. Chris Paul was still able to guard up. But like, man, it, it, the steals category is so funny to me because it's like for this for the lesser named players – that's such a like underrated part of someone's game. We see like yeah. Gary Payton the second, Alex Caruso, time, uh, yeah. you know Josh Hart. Seeing these guys, it's like, damn, they got a lot of value. But when you see a superstar, you know, leading the league in steals, it's like, bro, you're not playing defense. You're just you're ball watching. Yeah, you're just ball. Yeah, <laughs> we, we know. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> but it, it it is cool to see. Those are pretty much all we've got though for the statistical categories. Um, yeah. It's been an interesting group stage and a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes balled out. So uh, I hope to see some of these guys showing up uh, at some point in the, in in the NBA that aren't currently there. So yeah, that's, again, that's one of the best parts about this tournament is it's kind of a showcase for a lot of these overseas guys. Oh yeah. Uh, Next on the list, 
power rankings and not power rankings, so to speak, but more yeah. so the odds as far as uh, MGM goes. Yeah. And we've got them in order here. Yeah. Currently with the highest odds, I think we all kind of assumed it. Uh, granted, uh, you and I were pretty pro Canada. I uh, think, you know, assuming Canada was going to lead the pack. But uh, as of right now, the U.S. holds the best odds at under 250. Yeah. So it, it, they're the only team currently under right now. Uh, second best on the list is Canada with the odds of plus 500. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're there. We know how good Canada is, but I think it, it, I think our point still stands, which we've had this entire time is we need to see them really play some top teams. Good. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I think they, they did the other day a little bit. Yeah. They, who, who'd they play? Was it, uh, Let's see. They played Spain and they barely walked away with the three point win, uh, which we will get into. Yeah. But yeah, second in odds right now uh, are, is currently Canada. Mm-hmm. Third in odds, we've got Germany. Yeah. Germany with a plus 600. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if Franz is back yet. I did not see in their last I, I game. I don't think he is. I, and they're still undefeated technically, right? They are one of only two undefeated teams man, them dude, in Lithuania. This guy, what sport are they not good at in Germany, man? Yeah, so I got God. soccer, <laughs> Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah. Dude, they're killers. <laughs> uh, yeah, Germany is on one right now. Uh, yeah. And I, five and oh, you can't argue with it. And, I, and again, like we could be wrong. Uh, maybe he's back for the the quarterfinals, but at this point, we're under the impression that there's been no Franz Wagner outside of like one and a half games. Yeah, I, so I, yeah, that's even more impressive. Uh, next highest odds, Serbia. Yep, a team we kind of said was like middle of the pack. Uh, apparently, yeah, no, they're better. Good, man. They're good. <laughs> it's just, I, it's yeah. just they have so much more talent that doesn't play for the team, which is kind of odd. But they have, they still have a very good team. Yeah, and still. We're we're looking at you know the, to seeing the the improvement from Nikola Jovic because again yeah. without Jokic playing he's kind of their you know take it to the next level guy dude, so big time dude he's been killing it him and Bogdan man they're straight killing it over there yeah they're they're doing great they're gonna be a fun team to watch uh, next up we got Lithuania yeah uh, Lithuania hey. just knocked off the U S beat uh, them man gave them their first L of the uh, L of the tournament. They're still undefeated um, too. Yep. Yeah. Them and Germany, the only two Ooh. undefeated teams left. Uh Lithuania currently with uh what is it? Plus 1000 odds. So even though they're not ranked the highest, yeah. They just beat the US. And if you beat the US, and it, it wasn't like man. yeah, exactly. And something. again, uh, you know, when we look at like okay, Greece loses Giannis or Slovenia loses Luka, that's yeah. it. It's over. Yeah. But but the U.S. could lose like four guys and still be one of the top it's three teams. Still expect them to be the best, yeah. Yeah, they're they're like literally not a guy on the roster isn't great yeah. and wouldn't be like one of the top couple players on any other team. Any other so team, literally, yeah, maybe aside from Canada, maybe. But yeah, other than that, like US. Walker Kessler would be like the focal oh. point of a team, you know. Big time. Uh, next up, we've got Slovenia. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lucas show plus 2000 odds. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that gets, I'm telling you, man, before we even started, I said, this is literally going to be like the Mavericks. Yeah. This is pretty much what it is. It's like, should Slovenia be here? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. However, with Luca, anything's possible. So Ooh, very much so, man. Cause yeah. yeah, they're four and one. Uh, we'll get into their loss. Cause it was a pretty mighty one, but um, they are, they are a team to look out for again. If Luca gets on a heater, yeah, like we saw it against the Suns in 2022. Shit happens, man. Shit happens, and his teams can catch fire. Yeah. Next up, Italy. Uh, this one is about the as surprising as it'll get. This um, it feels like a it feels like a consolation prize. Yeah. However, they're not even ranked the lowest for their yeah. odds, which blows my mind. Yeah, that's a bit surprising to me, honestly. Yeah, I think I must have been sleeping on him because I didn't even consider him to be in my like any sort of contention team. Like, um, I didn't even have them in my top ten, man. I won't lie to you. They have them. Oh, they have them ranked ten for FIBA World Ranking, but I personally wouldn't have expected them to be a top ten team in this tournament. And hey, 
kind of twisting some heads, man. So I'm, I'm like you said, I'm, I was not expecting this whatsoever. Yeah. USA Today has them top 10. Yeah. If we go to the FIBA team statistics, I mean, right now, just off points per game, yeah. uh, they are ranked 20th, only averaging 80 points per game. Uh, mind yeah. you, the leader <laughs> being the U.S. averaging 101 points per game. Yeah. So, I mean, and the second lowest currently left is what we got to go up. Yeah. What Slovenia. Mean? Slovenia at 88. 88 points per game. So, I mean, the second lowest scoring team is almost averaging 10 more yeah. than Italy. So, That's a significant amount. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be tough sledding for Italy, but shout out to them for making it. Again, surprising that they are not even the lowest ranked team because the lowest odds we've got right now are Latvia with a plus 8,000. 100% disagree. Yeah. I got to disagree with that, man. I feel like they would mollywop Italy if they played. Yeah, frankly, I mean, I'm being honest. I think I might have Latvia over Slovenia too. I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally. be mad. I really wouldn't be mad. And if Kristaps was there, I would a thousand percent. Oh, if Kristaps was there, oh, yeah. we're talking like top three, four teams. Yeah, like they're minimum. I don't know, man. I personally think they're better on paper than Italy. I kind of surprised they. Yeah, have to be so high. I, I don't know how Italy's a plus five thousand. Yeah, the Latvia is ranked eighth with averaging ninety points per game. Yeah. Fifth, shooting 51% from the field and 40% from three. Like they're having a fantastic, fantastic go of things. And again, no Porzingis. This is a, a pretty big run for Latvia. Um, so it's it's really weird to me that they have Italy ranked higher. Um, yeah. or at least people are betting on Italy before they're betting on Latvia. Granted, I will say this as someone who relatively watches F1. The Tefosi fans are crazy. All right. Italy <laughs> loves their sport, so it wouldn't shock oh, yeah. me if. Like just most people in Italy are like, we're betting for Italy, you know. <laughs> like we don't care, we're just betting for them. Latvia is also shooting the fourth best percentage from three in this tournament. They're just they're they're on one. I'm telling they're you, them, they're they they're on, nasty. Them in Lithuania, they're catching fire at the right time. So yeah, and Lithuania had like Lithuania's got the inside game too, which I think oh, is yeah. like the biggest facet to their game because what we've seen from like the U.S. is a lot of small ball. Yeah, and Walker Kessler had a fantastic rookie season, especially defensively, but. You know, Jonas Valanciunas, say Came what you want eight. about him. He's pretty nasty, man. Came he's a good eight, post game. Yeah. yeah. He ate. So that's, yeah, I, I don't know. This is a, these are, I don't know. I, you, you never can put too much weight into rankings like this. And especially oh, yeah. from a betting perspective, but I, I, there's a few, I don't agree with on that list. Yeah. hundred percent moving on uh, again, meat and potatoes. We're going to get right into all the, uh, all the final games left or the final games of the eight remaining teams in this FIBA tournament um, starting off with a, a pretty crazy loss for the United States uh, losing yeah. their first game in this entire tournament, 104 to 110 to Lithuania. Yeah. Um, this was a pretty crazy game. Again, I think we all assume the U S is the best team. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody was not playing. I think it was full strength both sides, and Lithuania just outplayed the U.S. Um, yeah, pretty crazy. Especially it was a high scoring game, ending one ten to one hundred four, which yeah. maybe in the NBA is like at this point relatively low scoring. Low but scoring. FIBA, but FIBA, no, yeah, I yeah. eight minutes off too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, well, you're losing eight minutes a game right there, man. So yeah, so just to to put up that many points in a non blowout game is pretty crazy. So yeah. Um, you can get right into it, man. Let's yeah. uh, let's hear the stats from the game. The team stats, man, because mm-hmm. they – so USA, 53.4% from the field versus Lithuania's 52.8, but a three-point percentage, man. Lithuania shooting 56% from three to USA's yeah. 37.9. So 18% difference, and USA still shooting 38, which is pretty good, but – That's still above average, yeah. 56% from the field, man. That is – yeah ridiculous and the free throw is pretty pretty similar usa shooting basically 79 lithuania shooting 80 percent. and then when you get into the assists and stuff you have lithuania 26 or 26 for the usa 23 for lithuania but then the rebounding game man the usa got dominated on the boards man and Jonas valachunas what else guys in glass yeah. dude 18 offensive rebounds for lithuania to usa's nine 25 uh, but defensive rebounds to usa's 18 it's just like 43 Jeez. rounds total to 27, man. So you're getting 26 boards just like that. And I got to say, man, you got 
the whole squad thrown in right here. You got Tadas Sedakaris at a, with eleven boards. Jonas seven. You just it's a team effort. You have a bunch of guys. Just, it's just weird. I just I don't know. I wouldn't expect USA to get boarded this much, but I know maybe the small ball kind of got figured out in a way. It's. I, I still think it was a poor showing from USA, but at the same time, it was just a. Uh, I, I I don't know. They were they were getting blown out too at one point, like pretty badly. Yes, I look at you, man. So I mean, it was like yeah. thirty-one to twelve first quarter in favor of Lithuania. <laughs> USA was getting yeah. smacked down a bit, man, and then they came back. Obviously, and then it's just it wasn't enough. And I mean, I'll say by the box score right here, you have USA with. Austin Reeves, 7 0 and 0. Cam Johnson, 3 1 and 1. Mikel, 14 3 and 1. Tyrese, 3 2 and 7. Hell, uh, uh, Portis, 7 5 and 2. Edwards, 35 1 and 2. Brunson, 14 4 and 7. Kessler, 2 1 and 0. Ingram, 10 2 and 1. Hart, 0 2 and 0. JJJ, 3 1 and 3. And then Paulo, 6 2 and 2. And it's just, Edwards couldn't save us this time, man. <laughs> yeah, I think the big thing going forward is again, like we've seen this entire tournament so far, Walker Kessler and Bobby yeah. Portis are kind of getting minimal minutes. Yeah, I, I think um, it's the game you might have wanted to play those guys that maybe a bit more, more physicality with size. And I, I think that kind of shows that in the rebounding game or the rebounding department as a squad, I think they kind of dominated them pretty badly. So I the second chance rebounds, man, it's just like a lot. And then second chance points. 17 to 2 for Lithuania, man. That's Jeez. that's bad. That's 15 yeah. for second chance points is bad. And you lose by six. You that's just nine extra offensive yeah. boards. Yeah. You cut a few of those off, man. It, it's probably a different game. It's just I, I think they got I think their game plan kind of got exposed a little bit by someone just to, that ran a little bigger than them. It would yeah. quality things, though, too. Those exactly, because Jonas can score. Yeah. yeah. He can score. He can pretty she can shoot decently too. So I mean, yeah. I think they find, they ran into a quality big, and I think the quality big kind of took advantage there. Yeah, I think it's one of those things, too. Like, that was Steve Kerr's sort of, okay, we're going to test the waters real quick. We're going to try and get him into a spot where we can either run uh, run Jonas off the floor, which yeah. is, like, for the Warriors, Steve does that a yeah, lot. But, yeah. Um, so I, I think, again, I, like, everyone's – I mean, granted, this happens every game, NBA in general – uh, everyone bitches about the refs, but yeah. these last few games, not just for the U.S., but just in general, oh, yeah. everyone's been complaining about the yeah. refs and the refs are too people. involved. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I see the 25 fouls for Lithuania. Yeah. Um. Again, Steve Kerr led team the last few years, the Warriors have been a major fouling team. Uh, yeah. They foul a ton, very undisciplined defensively. Uh, and the offensive rebounds, like that was a huge issue for the Warriors this past season. Yeah. Uh, and it's because the Warriors had to run small ball. Now no. it's in, uh, yeah. again, they don't have to. They've got Walker Kessler got sitting there, yeah, Bobby I, Portis. It's confusing, you know. Me, I think that's a game you probably wanted to go bigger than not. Yeah. I feel like next time, the, the Warriors, or sorry, Team USA plays Lithuania, Italy. you'll probably see yeah. more Walker oh, yeah. Kessler, more Bobby Portis. Um, because, Lithuania kind of proved you're not gonna just sit there and uh yeah, and try and us. yeah low man us. Yeah, exactly. Not, so not that way. you gotta run big against someone like that. And um, yeah, yeah. Last interesting thought here. Uh both scored nearly 40 points in that fourth quarter. Yeah, 39, 39 apiece. Nine, yeah, I know. It's, that's a major, I mean, both teams punching one another. So that was that's <laughs> awesome to see. Um, yeah. Especially seeing Team USA have a 28 to 17 third quarter. Um, and for Lithuania to respond like that is yeah. very impressive. So big time. Um, huge win for Lithuania. Again, one of only two teams, them in Germany, to finish their group stage five and oh. Yeah. Um, so they're undefeated heading into this uh, knockout stage. Very impressive. Um, and speaking of, yeah. They're currently like we we've already talked about the the power rankings for Lithuania and for the U.S. Um, the U.S. points per game right now they are the number one team. Yeah. Lithuania they're not the third far. team. Yeah, not that not far, far off. Them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so from here we could kind of get into the for the team USA we could get into the. Um, the team stats and as well as some player stats uh, yeah. for the group stage going in um, right now, as a whole team USA has 
I mean, I mean, just looked really, really good. Uh, again, finishing first in points per game at 101 and a half points per game, uh, which again, minus the eight minutes, like if we're talking relative, that's probably like 110 plus points per game, um, maybe even more, but they're shooting 53%. They're one of the most efficient teams right now in the tournament, probably like top three, four. Um, yeah. And three-point percentage, like you said in this game, that's kind of been their one knock. Uh, they are yeah. shooting 37%, which, like you said, isn't bad. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not great. And there are teams that are shooting the shit out of the ball. These zero so. teams, man, they will, they will shoot you out the gym. That's exactly what it is, man. They will shoot you out of the gym. And I mean, Lithuania for the tournament so far is averaging 46.5% from three. Yeah. You got Canada averaging 40%, Germany 39%, Latvia 40%, Slovenia is the only team aside from Italy that are kind of shooting a, a very low percentage at about 31%. So yeah, um, the U.S. is kind of lacking there. Yeah. Um, and free throw percentage, one. another thing, 78%. That's not great. Um, granted, it's not like they've got a, like Steve Nash, you know, uh, shooting <laughs> free throws. So yeah. Um, uh, still pretty impressive showing so far from Team USA. You've also yeah. got the player stats here. Anthony Edwards leading the way. Yeah. Like we said, you know, yeah. that was this was kind of the guy we knew was going to be the leader here. Uh, he's leading the way at points per game handedly. Next yeah. closest is at about 10. Anthony Edwards averaging 20 points per game. Uh, his efficiency has been a little, a little meh. Shoddy. Yeah. yeah, mostly on the threes, but. You know, Anthony Edwards in general is kind of like going to be a low to mid three point percent guy. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, Leading the way in rebounds. uh, Anthony Edwards or yeah, Anthony Edwards again. No, never mind. Not Anthony. Edwards. I'm sorry. Josh Hart at six point two rebounds per game. Uh, Not shocking. That dude has always been like the league leader in rebounds in the last like three years he's played. Yeah. Um, He's one of the best like rebounding guards, if not the best in the league, aside from like Patrick Beverly and a couple others. So yeah, um, always cool to see him there. Just a great defensive glass guy uh, leading the way with assists. Tyrese Halliburton, no shock. Like no. that dude is one of the best yeah. playmakers in the league. Big time. Um, and it, it's interesting because we were talking about it in the showcase uh, in the showcase series for the U S Halliburton might be the better guy to run than Jalen Brunson. In my opinion. That- very much so. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. It adds a different aspect to the to their team. I mean, I'm I'm kind of surprised he's only averaging five, to be honest, because a few of the games I've watched him play, it seems like he's getting a lot more than just that. Yeah, when he plays a lot of minutes, when he gets control of the ball, yeah, he, he's he's, good I, he's going to naturally be like a ten assist guy. It's yeah. just going to happen. Um, and I think the other thing you see when he plays is the ball just flows more. Yeah. Because again, like he, even though he scored, like he scores a good amount in the tournament so far, he has it because he hasn't like, you know, been the guy, like he isn't with the Pacers, but yeah, uh, he, he just moves the ball. Well, like he makes the right decisions, makes the right place. He's not trying to do the most. And, you know, yeah. let me, let me cook up an ISO. It's like, he just does what the team needs. And, yeah, you know, you see that with the assist and especially the assist to turnover ratio, only 1.2 turnovers yeah. per game. Not bad. Um, the five though. Yeah, very so <laughs> very good showing here for Team USA. Um, moving on, we got Team Canada. Uh, Team wow. Canada has been really solid as well. Again, yeah. they lost to the Dominican Republic, if I'm not mistaken. Them or Puerto Rico. Uh, um, uh, was it? I mean, it was one of them, um, and it was because Canada was like sitting the majority of their players. So. Uh, they lost to oh Brazil. I see the Brazil one on Friday. Oh, that was the game. The the other one is the showcase I'm talking about. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I see. I see. No, no, you're right. It did that happened earlier. Yeah, that was the showcase. That was pre group yeah. stage. So the Brazil game. You're right. Um, that was the crazy. That was the second crazy loss. Um, yeah, Canada was... almost losing their second in a row though. Um, yeah. Barely crazy. walking away to Spain with an barely 88 to 85 win here. Yeah. Um, that is, yeah. Um, so, if you want to get into the stats there, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So as a team, Canada shot 49% to Spain's 46%. And 45% from Canada, which I believe they're ranked third right now in three-point percentage for all teams yeah. in the tournament, which could be another striking point going forward. I'm 
Very interested to see how they continue to shoot the ball. This is the first team I see them play against that was very competitive and gave them a great game. So mm-hmm. you have Spain also shooting 34.6%. Spain shooting 90% from the free throw line to Canada's 84. And assists, Spain, 28 to 18. Spain was a very good passing team this whole tournament, and I, I want to mm-hmm. praise them for that. They were they passed the ball very well, and it flowed really well. And offensive boards, very identical, 11 to 9 for Spain. Defensive rebounds, another identical stat pretty much, 22 to 21 for Canada. And rebounds in total, Spain wins by just one, 32 to 31. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Steals game, a lot of steals for both teams, seven for Spain, six for Canada, good amount. Tied at four beasts, uh, four blocks apiece. And turnover game, very similar, uh, 15 to 14 for Canada winning that. And the fouls, Spain with 27 to 22. So both lots of fouls from both sides, but definitely Spain with 27 is going to kill you every time. You have 36 point paints, uh, paint points, sorry, for Spain to 30 for Canada. 38 points from the bench from Spain. So they yeah. were one of the teams that had a lot of guys that came off the bench and they were pretty good with minute distribution, I thought. And Canada with 30, you have, or I'm sorry, with eight bench points. That's pretty low. 17 points for turnovers from Canada. It's a good amount. It's not going to help you ever second chance points, 12 to nine for Spain. And you had Spain leading this game 28 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, I'm looking at the biggest, the biggest, uh, you know, biggest point of mistake, I would say, or more so like the turning point for Spain was that fourth quarter, 27 yeah. to 12 outscored. And you could just see it in those percentages, 47% yeah. from the field, 35% from three, only nine of 26 from three. Yeah. Um, rough fourth quarter. And then we see as well, even though the fouls were relatively close at 28 yeah. to 22, um, if you look at the free throw attempts, 20 attempts for Spain, 25 yeah. for Canada. So you got more uh, more shots at the line for Team Canada. Uh, That's great, man. He's, he's a. Yeah. He's Canada awesome. handed, <laughs> I, I mean, barely walking away with yeah. the win there, kind of. Uh, Banking on the on a low shooting night. I know on the Dylan Brooks game, man. He uh he had a pretty good game. I won't I won't lie. Yeah, 22, 5, and 2. Yeah. Um I do want to shout out Willie Hurd and Gomez, man. 25, man. 6, and 3. Hell Dude. of a performance. The whole tournament, man. He was killing it. Him and his brother. Yeah. Great to see Willie end the tournament for Spain on that note. Um, yeah. Great final showing. Juancho did not play very great. He also only played about 13 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got second leading score for Spain. Santi Aldama, 20 yeah. and two for him. Solid, hey. solid performance. Uh, he's a dude for the Grizzlies that we could really see kind of take a step forward off the bench there. Uh, big time three point shooter. Uh, just someone, uh, you know, just another guy that can offer a bit of a punch for the Grizzlies off the bench. Definitely. Team Canada, I'll let you go there. That's your guy. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you have Dylan Brooks, like we said, 22-5-2, and two, huge game. He was the biggest reason why they won this game, I personally thought. You have R.J. Barrett, 16-5-1, and one, Dwight Powell, 6-3, and you have Shea, man, with 34-7, and seven, had another great game for them. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, 5-2-1, and one, Dort, 3-5-6, and six. Olenek, 6-2-1. and one. It's just – this is another team, like I mentioned, I, I really like watching these teams with very solid minute distribution and multiple scoring. Like, like Slovenia, in a way, it, it is cool to see Luka do all this, but at the same time, I kind of enjoy watching these other teams with yeah. multiple scoring options, multiple ways to score, and just, like, different minute distribution. And I know that's not Luka's fault at all based around the talent around him. So it makes sense. But I, I understand that. But it's very fun to watch this Canada team. They're – like we mentioned, this is a very close game, probably a lot closer than they would have liked, but it's Spain. Yeah. It's a very good team, so it's not very surprising. Spain's always going to put on a hell of a game. It, it made sense. So this is this is a big win for Canada, to say the least. Yeah, and I think going forward, the, you know, we've talked about uh, the offensive punch that Canada has, but because they've just kind of beaten the piss out of so many teams, <laughs> we forget how strong they are defensively. Oh, yeah. Um, you got R.J. Yeah. Barrett, Dylan Brooks, Literally. Lou Dort, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Uh, yeah. Kelly Olenek is not a great defender at, at forward center, but he's a good team defender. Yeah. Dwight Powell, solid team defender, not a guy you want to be your only you know defensive yeah. big man, but yeah. because you've got so many great perimeter defenders around you, Dwight Powell is not that big of a, a liability. liability. Yeah, not yeah. at all. And Shea can hold his own. So oh, yeah. uh, this is just a very, like, 
probably aside from the U.S. Again, they're probably the most well-rounded team Very out much. of anyone in the tournament. Yeah. Um, and now. again, it's you know they they barely escaped with this one, but uh, it's going to be a fun tournament to see them uh, to see them continue to play, continue to you know hopefully get better and <laughs> yeah, because they I mean, get better. <laughs> yeah. Jamal Murray, man. I mean, it's a big player right there, man. I mean, you're I honestly on this roster, he'd probably arguably be the second best player i would say yeah I, it's it's so funny with jamal it's like every time he's not playing everyone's like yeah he's probably like well like a top 10 15 point guard and then when he plays it's like yeah. this dude's like oh, top this five guy, yeah this guy's amazing <laughs> yeah. yeah literally because yeah no he is that is something that's big man i think if they have him they have a different aspect to this team and they already have a great team as is so yeah yeah they no this team is really good <laughs> Yeah, Jim, man, going to the Olympics next year, if, you know, Jamal Murray can stay healthy, I, that's going to be a – they're going to be a much improved team. Um, so many of these teams are going to have yeah. new names Dude. added to them that's just going to completely flip the tide. So, um, yeah, great job for Team Canada. Again, just super fun to watch. Uh, going into some statistics for Team Canada. Yeah. Uh, right now, <laughs> again, they are currently – Fourth in points per game, like you said, their top three in three point percentage, yeah. uh, field goal percentage, still also one of the highest at about 50%, 49.9. Yeah, like, they're just again so well rounded. I think the only knock that I could see right now is the free throw percentage at 73%, which is yeah. not great. It's a bit low. Um, yeah, but it's just they've had a fantastic tournament and. I mean, I don't really know what, you know, what more to say about them other than just getting into the player stats. Yeah. Um, Because we already know Shea is the leader, like yeah. leading the way 24 points per game. Absolutely killing it. This dude averaged, didn't, did he win the scoring title for you guys last season? He was fourth in scoring. It was, uh, or he's fourth or third. It was. I think Giannis, Luca, and Embiid were the ones ahead of him. Okay, because I know he averaged thirty, right? He did. He did average thirty. Yeah. He, yeah. And he had time on the IL, so he was not like playing eighty-two games. He missed some time too. Missed, I believe, around fifteen to ten games. Pretty crazy to still got uh, still average thirty like that. So yeah, um, Shea is just uh, he's a monster, and he plays the game so unique in today's standards for Very a point wonderful. guard. Yeah. Um, not a big three point shooter. I mean, you see here four uh, four attempts a game from three. He only shot like two attempts a game last year. Yeah, like, for, yeah. He's a he gets to the cup. He gets to the cup. He's got the mid range. He has a bit of a post game four point guard. He's yeah. just a great all around you know all around scorer. Um, rebounding again, leading the way there. Shocking. Jay Gildas Alexander with six and a half boards per game. Yeah, man. And leading the way in assists at five assists a game. So yeah. it, this team is kind of just all Shea. And then, no, yeah, like, he has a, a great ton of surrounding. Cast. Exactly. Great support um, cast, yeah. It feels a little bit like this is what an OKC team can look like, you know? If you yeah. just get that that production around him, I mean, you get the continued improvement from Josh Giddy. If you could see Lou Dort really kind of pick up a bit of an offensive game. Yeah. See what you know. See whatever you get out of Chet Holmgren. Um, Shea is just going to make you guys one of the best teams in the league. So um, it's great to see Team Canada playing like this. Moving on from there, third highest odds to win this thing. We got Germany. Yeah, and we've been very high on Germany this entire tournament. Again, no Franz Wagner, and they're yeah. still balling the way they are. Um, so their like final that. game they played. A huge win versus Luca and Slovenia, a <laughs> hundred to seventy one. Yeah, hey, yeah. um, again, yeah, they're again one of the only two teams undefeated, undefeated. five yeah. and zero. Dude, they're man. I didn't think they. I knew they'd be good, but not this good, man. They're yeah, they're, they're killing on, it. They're playing on a level where I think they might be able to compete with USA. Yeah, I mean, again, we we talked about it a few times now during the showcase. They're like the only team that really put up a fight. Big time. Um, so Germany is not to be trifled with. So yeah. if you want to get right into that game. Yeah. So you have, I mean, this was an ugly one for Slovenia, man. Oh this was, yeah. It was not a good one. So you have Germany shooting 54% versus Slovenia's 41% from the field. Germany shooting 48% from three versus Slovenia's 22% pretty much. That's 
that's pretty bad right there. And then you have yeah. free throws going to Germany at 88% to Slovenia 66%. Do you have the attempts for the free throws? I, for some reason, I'm not getting the attempts online. Yeah, 15 of 17 for Germany and then wow. 14 of 21 for Slovenia. More okay. attempts, yeah. less makes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have Germany with 26 assists to Slovenia's 19. You have pretty similar offensive rebounding game with Germany at 9 to Slovenia's 8. Germany with the defensive rebounds, though, 30 to 20. That's a significant amount. They win the yeah. rebound category, 39 to 28. Steals, very comparable. Nine for Germany to eight. And blocks, three to one for Germany, not a big one. Turnovers, not a big one. Germany with 14 to Slovenia's 13. Fouls tied at 20 apiece. Fast break points, though, Germany with 20 to nine. And the biggest lead belongs to Germany with 32. And points in the paint, very similar again, 34 to 32. Points on the bench, though, Germany with 38 to 28. Points for turnovers, Germany 23 to Slovenia's 18. And second chance points goes to Germany with 10 to 7. And they won, they, they were leading this game um, 21 minutes of the game. But also to mention, what quarter was it they started to pull away? It was the second, well, yeah, second quarter. First quarter, they were getting beat pretty solidly. Second quarter, they pull away. And then the rest of the game from there, they kind of... It was all Germany. Away, and then yeah. Germany, Germany takes the win. And... German Germany's best players this game, Isaac Vonga back again, 12-5-1. Tice again, 14-7-1. Great showing for him. Schroeder, 24-2-10. Another great performance. Killing it. He's been killing it. Yeah, that's to say the least. You have Mo, 10-8-1. Another guy who's been killing it. Yeah. Andres Opt, 8-2-4. Jonas Voitman, 4-5-3. And, and this, this whole team, they've been really, as a collective unit, they've been playing very well together. And this is yeah, I think personally now in the tournament, looking at the rest of the teams remaining, I personally think they are the best. How do I say this? Best camaraderie, I guess I would say. They play the most. They gel the best together. Personally, to me, from what I've seen, I, I think USA as a unit is better, but as a team and how they play together, I think Germany is one of the most fun teams to watch as of right now. They all complement one another very well. Yeah, very much so. And then moving on to Slovenia, Luca, not his fault. It, he had a, he he didn't have the greatest game, but he had twenty three six and six, very solid for him still, but still not as a unit. He need this team's gonna need a lot more help in the future. I think going forward, Zoran five two and two, Alexei Nikolic seven one and five, Mike Mike Toby four three and one, Bean Prepolic four three and zero, and then those guys been having some pretty solid outings too. Yeah. His supporting cast hasn't been really has been putting up pretty solid numbers the past few games aside from this one. So it's not like they haven't been playing well and it's just been Luca solely. But I, I definitely think when you play a team like Germany, when you play a team like Canada, USA, they're going to obviously add more challenge to Luca's load already, and he already has probably the biggest load out of anyone in this tournament realistically. So I think playing a teams in the future and they're going to advance. I don't think they win this tournament. As of right now, I'm not very high on them, but I do got to give the um, I got to give Lucas props, man. He's he's playing great. He's doing all he can. I can't hate on him too much, man. He's doing he's doing what he can. And I think the talent around him is just not comparative to these other teams, which Germany blow them out the water with talent. Canada, USA blow them out the water with talent. Even I think Latvia and Lithuania on paper are better units than them. at 100%. Yeah. And I think maybe Italy would be the only team I would probably say is not as good as Slovenia, maybe. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we've talked about this before, like way back in the first couple episodes with guys like Luca, guys like James Harden, guys like Trey Young, that just, they just spam pick and roll. They do. And they spam ISO. It's like, it's not that those are viable ways to score. It's that when team, when you face a defense that can defend on a string, like Germany, I, I mean, look at their roster, like Dennis Schroeder, fantastic perimeter defender as a guard yeah. isaac bonga great defensive yeah. guard daniel yeah. tice solid defensive center again very yeah. draymond like mo wagner can hold his own like they've got a lot of defenders and they're pretty tall as a unit so they are. when you're facing a big team that plays the passing lanes can defend on a string can guard 1v1 like yeah. can hold their own 1v1 that doesn't have to do a shitload of switching yeah uh, the you know Heavy, uh, heavy pick and roll basketball. It just gets stopped. It, does. it just, it just gets stopped. And does, you know, 100%. we both agree that like Luca, whether it's real life or whether it's this, 
Yeah. Luca never really has the, you know, supreme level of talent that he probably should. However, he needs a specific supporting cast. He He's does. so he specialized. Certain, you need to play a certain brand of basketball around him. That's very fair. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's, if that's your only way of winning games, because, like, you win. know, yeah. we've talked about like Kyrie and what he can do for this team, but it's like, that's, you're not you're not shifting how the game is played with Kyrie because Kyrie pretty much does the same thing, just less pick and roll. Yeah, like he's just more ISO oriented. Yeah. Um, both still get to the cup. Both can still make the passes to the corners, passes back to the like they 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 both do similar stuff with the ball. Um, it's just it's so one dimensional that in a in a game where the defense is super tight, in a game where the calls aren't going your way. It, regardless of how good you may play, it's hard to win. No, it's it just hard to win. Um, and again, Luca is so unique in the way that he's able to kind of, you know, I, I mean, we saw with Jordan Clarkson, like J- Jordan Clarkson backpacked for the Philippines. Philippines yeah. got bounced fast. Yeah. You know, yeah, France, yeah. Fournier backpack bounced fast. Like Luca is, is just one of the rare cases that manages to get these teams. Yeah. Where you don't think they can make it. No, so. I'm with you on that. This is, Luca versus all. It's, yeah, it's it, unfortunately, but again, it's like it's almost self-inflicted. You know, if you play, you play a way where the game kind of becomes that. So, yeah, I mean, it is a very hard way to play. I, I, you can't, like you said, you can't spam pick and rolls constantly and expect a different result. And like you said, teams are gonna be able to defend that over time. And I mean, you have like it's just the right personnel. Like I said, when you play teams like early in the earlier rounds yes you will beat on them in the pick yep. and roll you will beat them down but when you run into a team like germany serbia usa canada it's not going to work they they have they have guys they they literally especially i wouldn't want to play canada or usa if i was if because I was, they've got so much nba today. they already know what luca wants what, to do you got athleticism and you have you, yeah you have they, yeah. they got them all scouted out so it's it's going to be tough for luca but again it, it's just it's one of those things where it's like it's even though we're sitting here saying yeah. Like it's not a winning brand of basketball. If there's anyone that can pull this shit off, it's Luca. Yeah. So definitely, you know, still gotta, it's, you still gotta watch out for him. So, Oh no, I'm with you a hundred percent on that. No, that's very much the case. Cause yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they made, they've made it this far and I'm, I'm not going to count them out just yet. I think maybe they can still advance possibly. I, I won't yeah. count them out just yet. Yeah. And uh, I, we've kind of hyper-focused on Luca and that's, that's my fault, but, we, I did want to get into the team statistics for Germany as well as some player stats. Uh, again, team stats, Germany, sixth in points per game at 93 and a half. One of the highest efficiency rating teams with 54, uh, 52 and a half percent and shooting about 40% from three, 39% yeah. flat. But again, uh, we're looking at another low free throw percentage team, 73.2. Yeah. That's even lower than Canada. Very odd. Um, yeah, you know, they've got a just a very well-rounded squad, not the biggest punch you in the face team, not yeah. the best defensive team, but they're just very balanced. Um again, yeah. they don't even shoot too many free throws. Only six they are they're only averaging peak 16 and a half free throw attempts per game. Yeah. So uh it, you know, it, it's been a it's been a very great showing for Team Germany. Uh yeah. only one of only two undefeated teams. It's gonna be very interesting to see where they go forward because like you said, they're like, there probably isn't a team that's more kind of united than them. Um, Aside from maybe the Serbia, Lithuania, and Latvia's, personally, I think Serbia is probably more balanced than those other two teams when it comes to like mm-hmm. minutes distribution and how they play together, how they gel. But I think those the, the Euro teams, man, aside from Slovenia, those those Euro teams, they, they're very good at playing a brand of basketball that's together. And I'm I'm fond of that. I think that's very nice to see. Yeah, you know, such a high, high, uh, ISO heavy NBA game today. I think it's very nice to see team ball like how they've been playing recently. Yeah, it's it is great to see. Yeah, and getting into the player stats here, we got Dennis Schroeder leading the way uh, yeah. in this tournament at about twenty points per game. Um, his efficiency rating is pretty wild. Second yeah. highest is sixteen and a half percent. He's got a twenty one point two efficiency rating, which is very impressive. He's been good, man. He's been killing it. And uh, yeah. there was a podcast i was watching the other day saying that that they were to give their mvps right now they said they mentioned him as an honorable mention and i the way he's been playing man the way he's been leading this team i personally think you probably have to put him in that 
top five right now because he's been amazing. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, again, especially leading them, like helping lead them to a five and a record. Oh, dude, yeah. And I mean, he's 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 yeah definitely a leader of that team right now. We got leading in the rebound category, Mo Wagner, six yeah. per game, uh, tied with Franz Wagner at six per game. But again, Franz has a, he's only played one game. Yeah. Um, hey. I hope he comes back, man. That'd be sick. Yeah, hopefully in this tournament we get to see him more. Um, because again, leading in the assist category, we got Dennis Schroeder. Yeah, man. Seven assists per game. Um, he's just the, he's a great player, man. He's there's a reason he's one of the best uh six men in the league. It's just yeah. like he's just very good. Um, we've seen how good he can be in his years with Thunder. We've seen how good he could be with his years in the Hawks. Like yeah. he's just a quality backup point guard. So um, to see him help carry this Germany team is awesome. So moving on, we've got a couple teams left uh, to avoid redundancy. We're just going to talk about player and team stats with Lithuania and Slovenia. However, we do still have Serbia, Italy, and Latvia to go over. Yeah. Uh, so from there, we're going to start with Serbia. Uh, their final game of the group stage was a massive, massive win over Dominican yeah. Republic. Yeah. 112 to 79. If you want to just get right into it. Yeah. So like we mentioned, uh, Dominican Republic was a very solid team. The whole tournament started off three and oh, and I think when they ran into tougher teams like Serbia and such, they kind of reality kind of struck. If that makes sense. I personally think that Serbia is one of the better teams and to show for a man that shot 65% from the field compared to, um, Dominican Republic's 42.9%. You have three point percentage. DR winning that one at 38% to Serbia's 32%, 100% from the free throw line for DR to 72% from Serbia. Assists, Serbia with 30 to 17, man. That mm. is a huge category right there. O- offensive rebounds, DR takes that one 8 to 5. Serbia with the defensive rebounds, 27 to 17. And then total rebounds, Serbia 32 to 25. Not a huge discrepancy, but a bit. The steals, though, man. That is a significant amount of more steals for Serbia at 11 to 5. That is a significant amount. And Blocks three to two, very comparable. Turnovers, though, this is another thing that killed DR. 21 to 12, man. That's a significant amount of turnovers. <laughs> turnovers are going to kill you. And that's just how it is. Fouls, not terrible. 20 to 14. Dominican Republic with more. Fast break points, 34 to 15 for Serbia. That is a significant amount. Points in the paint, 70 to 32. I I've not seen that all time. <laughs> yeah. Eight point paints is a significant Bully. amount. That yeah. is a good amount. And then points from the bench, Serbia, 48 to 31. Another one, that's that's a lot of uh, points from the bench from a FIBA team that I've seen so far. That's pretty up there. Points from turnovers, 29 to 13. Serbia, man, I mean, almost every category they were dominant in very much so. I mean, th- this this wasn't a slouch of a DR team, too. This is a no. solid team. This is And Kat's been playing out of his mind, too. Yeah. That's Maybe with this game, 25 and seven for him. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I'm looking at the stats right now, man. You have Stefan Jovic, 12, six, and seven. You have Philip Petrozev, 14, four, and two. Jovic didn't even have the best game, zero, three, and five. You have Bogdan, 21 and five. Vanya Mar- uh, Marinkovic, 16, zero, and zero. Ognin Dobrich, nine, two, and zero. Dusan R- Ristich. Four one and zero, Marco Guterich, ten two and three, Dion Davidovac, three five and three, and then you have a Alexa Avramovic, eight one and three, and Nikola Milutinov, sixteen five and two. So this is just a great amount of scoring from almost every individual on this team. Their best player that we've probably said, I say it's a one a one b one situation between Jovic and Bogdan right now, but just yeah. that. Jovic didn't even have the greatest scoring game, and they still dominated these guys pretty badly in almost every yeah. category. And I, I think this team might be a bit overlooked at times because they are very good. This is – I When we were just talking about Germany being like a very yeah. well-balanced team, no, and you this, said yeah. Serbia is probably one of those teams that might be more just based off of the balance and roster. And we yeah. see it here, six guys in double figures. Yeah, man. So. I mean – this is a, yeah. This is another great team. I, 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 they they beat a really they beat a pretty solid team too. It's not like they just beat one of the the Lebanons or someone like that. They beat yeah. a very solid team, Dominican Republic, and they did it manhandled them pretty badly. So I think that speaks volumes. I think they they might. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are able to compete with USA and Canada scoring wise because they are 
They are second best in points right now. They are putting up the second most points in the tournament. Mm-hmm. They are one of the best offensive teams in the tournament. So it's interesting to see, man, because I, I, I've i liked a lot from Jovic is his defensive side of the ball, man. He's been putting tremendous pressure on ball handlers. He's been reading the passing lanes. He's been a menace on that side of the ball. He's been playing great defense. So I – I got no nothing bad to say about this team. They are they're yeah. firing in all cylinders right now. This is a team I want to say please play Lithuania. I think that would be a fireworks type game. This would be very yeah, fun. Would. Yeah. So that's that's something I want to see, man. Because they have a they have a very deep roster for just uh just to look at it right now. Just to think they don't have some of their best players that are in the NBA. So yeah. This is a really good basketball country, definitely. Again, it, like we've talked about Greece missing Giannis. We talked about Slovenia yeah. missing Luka. Yeah. Serbia doesn't have Nikola Jokic. Yeah. They <laughs> like, don't care, man. They're just rolling right now. Dude. Yeah. Jokic. I mean, oh. if they had Jokic, oh, they're better than the U.S. They're okay. better than the U.S. Yeah, definitely, bro. I'm with you on that one. He's man. that good. Yeah. He's that good. I mean, so, the center they have, man. He's like balling. He's doing out. well. Nikola uh, Milutinov, he's been playing pretty well. Yeah, sixteen and five up. in this one. Yeah, yeah. like I, I and I like what you said about Jovic too. I mean, that's like remember he's with Miami for now. Yeah, yeah he's no, with Miami, and you want to play for the Heat, man. It's all about the defense. Hey, like first and foremost, you yeah. got to defend. So if he wants to see minutes, that's gonna have to be effort there. He, he's and an athlete too. He's man. improving. I, yeah, I yeah. Know, he is an athlete. He is very athletic because man, he is he's not like these, he he's not like the, the other Serbian players, I would say, when it comes to terms of athleticism, but he's very athletic compared to them. And he's got some, I mean, he's got some Franz Wagner in him. Like he's yeah, he, he does. doesn't look like he's athletic, but he's then you see him and he moves yeah. better than you think. Yeah, he taller than you think. think. He yeah, solidly. Like he, he's a player that has a lot of tools under his belt. And I'm I, I think he can make a decent leap. I, I think he can be pretty significant to that Heat team maybe this year if he ends up staying. I think. Well, when he got drafted, he was seen as like one of the oh, yeah. couple best foreign players in the draft. So. Yeah, potential wise, yeah. He was, he was he's got good. a lot to. Uh, he's got a lot to just keep building on. So I don't think his ceiling is even close to being is hit. He, is he twenty or is he twenty one? Nineteen to twenty one in that age. Like he's, yeah, he's very, very young. Very young. So yeah, this is this is something I like to see though that these foreign guys are starting to come over younger instead of. How well, remember they're the playing pro yeah. ball at such a yeah. young age. Like, yeah, I know. Well, That's Jokic why. Start, when did wait? When did Lucas start playing? Like 15, 15 16, 16 for like Real Madrid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, these dudes are playing as children. Like, come yeah. on now. Um, hey, they're taking over, man. I give them that. I I don't know if you see this, but I'm on the Google uh, standings here or the Google stats page here for this. Um, mm-hmm. They've got the uh, standings, and we talked about how Italy's kind of an odd, you know, okay, I, you're here. I don't know yeah. how, but you're here. Yeah. Um, if we look at the differential, so Italy and Serbia are in the same division. It- Italy, Serbia, Puerto Rico, and Dominican are in the same division. Yeah. Italy is in first in the division. Uh, 404 points for, 370 points against. Serbia is in second place, same record, 502 points for. A full, excuse me, essentially 100 points over Italy. Yeah. Only 10 more points against than Italy. The differential, 122 for Serbia to Italy's 34. Like, uh, Serbia is just, I don't yeah. know how on earth Italy is ahead yeah. of them, yeah. but they are. That doesn't add up, man. I'm kind of. And this is a good division. Again, Puerto Rico, Dominican, they're not a single team here had a negative record. Puerto no, Rico, three and two. Dominican, tough. three and two. They were in a tough bracket. They were yeah. in a very really tough bracket. And they literally every team here scored yeah. more points than Italy. Yeah. 502, 444 for Puerto Rico, 425 for Dominican. Like it, uh, Italy, Italy plays on Tuesday against USA, right? That's gonna I, and, I think that's gonna be a fucking blowout personally. That, that probably will be a I don't see it being if it's close. I mean, More power to Italy, man. They, exactly, they, but they I, <laughs> when you're only averaging like 80 points per game, and yeah, apparently defensively they're pretty solid, but I don't know. The U.S. is a different animal, so we'll see. It is. I I, I think Serbia would blow them out. Serbia, I think any I think, team here. Slovenia might be the only Slovenia team that I'm like, m- yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know why everyone. I don't know why Italy would be ranked uh, the way they are. It's not even that I'm disrespecting Italy. I just. I just. No. Yeah. These other countries are just better. Yeah. 
Um, again, so because we did the same thing with Luca, I don't want to drift too much off of where we were, but we are on yeah. Serbia, and I do want to get into the team and player statistics here. Uh, again, Serbia second best points per game in this yeah. entire tournament at 104 or 100.4 points per game. Yeah. Uh, the most efficient team at 55% from the field and one of the most efficient three-point shooting teams at around 30, uh, 38%, uh, 37.6 bowl round up. Uh, and shooting 80.5% from the free throw line, averaging 24 attempts, which is one of the highest in mm-hmm. the entire tournament. So uh, Serbia has just been absolutely killing it in this entire tourney. And again, I think you're right. They probably are one of the few best teams. Like genuinely, if anyone's putting up comp against the U.S., Serbia yeah. might be that team. I mean, um, they, they were good in previous years, man. They made the they made yeah. the 2016 uh, championship game. They just they, yeah. they lost the USA, and I mean, I don't think there's, there's when Jokic was uh, after his rookie year. They were a very young team at the time, and now I think with someone like that next time, maybe around they yeah they could win it all again. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah. And team leaders and points, like we know, Bogdan Bogdanovich leading the way with 18 and a half points per game. Uh, shockingly, the highest efficiency rating on the team is Nikola Mulatanov with yeah, 24% for, uh, efficiency rate. Yeah. yeah. Um, rebounding again, Milutunov, nine and a half boards per game, assists. Uh, we got Stefan Jovic averaging seven a game. Yeah. Um, it's just a very, I mean, you got four guys here in double figures for the, ter- five guys in double figures for the tourney. Yeah. Um, it's just such a like balanced squad. It's pretty crazy to see. So um, Serbia, man, they're going to be great. Uh, they're going to have some great games here and I'm excited to, to keep, uh, to keep seeing them. Yeah. To move on from there, we've got Lithuania. Now we already went over the, Lithuania game against the U.S. So we will just get into the uh, team stats and the player stats here. Yeah. Um, Lithuania, they're third in scoring. Yeah, they're ninety-six and a half percent or good. points per game. They're killing it. Like they're they killing. again, just such a balanced squad. Very um, much so because they, yeah, they they have been one of the more fun teams, and they've been shooting the three ball pretty well too. Yeah, forty-seven percent. They are <laughs> leading the entire tournament yeah, in uh, three-point percentage. They've been shooting that thing very well, man. Because yeah, on twenty-five like, attempts. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, they're Max, it's not low attempts, yeah. man. I mean, you see Serbia at twenty-nine, and then you see them with twenty-five, but shooting six percent better. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like they, yeah, they. If when they pull the trigger, they're yeah. they're not missing too many times. Oh, uh, and really. they're shooting fifty-four percent from the field, which is the second highest in the entire yeah. tournament. Yeah, literally. So, like again, Serbia is disgusting. Lithuania, yeah. just as if not more. Like, yeah, honestly. <laughs> and shooting, I mean, seventy-seven percent is not the best from the free throw line, but they're also only taking eighteen attempts a game max. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Lithuania just played a great, a great tournament, and we just saw, man, they beat the U.S. They beat them, dude. So, they beat the quote unquote alpha team of the whole thing pretty yeah they were beating them pretty decent too for a majority of the game it's not like, it like was, they just escaped with one yeah they were beating them pretty solidly it's just usa actually made finally came alive a bit at the end but it was too late and i don't know was, well the best part about that too is again that was the, the uh the u.s put up 28 points to 17 in that yeah. third quarter yeah and then serbia or not serbia lithuania just fought in a dog fight yeah. with the u.s right putting up 39 points in that fourth quarter to tie the U S like they were not going to be denied. And that's the main thing is it's like the U S is just going to punch you in the face, man. Every third quarter you see them take off. Yeah. If you could hold on, just hold on for the ride and then answer, you know? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you, man. And that's like we mentioned, this is, this isn't a bad team. Like this is, there's NBA talent on it and they have, they have big men that, Seem to be very physical with Team USA. So physical and they're good. offensively talented. Like Jonas they're, is a good post up big. He's yeah. not like a uh, Rudy Gobert, where it's like if it's not a lob, this dude's ass. It's like yeah, no, he can. You know, you dump it off to Jonas in the post, and this dude is oh, dream yeah. shaking you. You know, very skilled players, man. They have yeah on over there, and then yeah, man. This just looking at their like point totals, they have multiple guys, and t- yeah, it's just this is it's great to see that. 
Yeah, you got four dudes in double figures, yeah. and you got uh, Ben Duzia right behind with nine and a half. Like, yeah, man, they I mean, are. They're just a very balanced team. Like very. the leading scorer is only leading by like one point, and that's Jonas Valanciunas at thirteen and a half percent. Leading in the rebounds again, Jonas seven and a half boards per or nine and point two boards per, uh, yeah. boards per game. Leading the assist category, uh, you've got Joe. Jokobitis, yeah, y- y- Jokobitis or Jokobitis, five and a half assists per game. Yeah, like it's not like they're you know just passing the pants off the ball, but they don't turn it over too much, and no. they they just have multiple ways of scoring. So yeah, they, um, damn good team, very good team. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Turnover wise, they are they're not bad. They're at um, where are they? Oh, they're they're about thirteenth right now. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, no, thirteen a game. That's not horrible compared to some of the other teams. Because the what? Who's the best? Greece. Yeah, that makes sense. Serbia. Serbia is at ten turnovers per game. That's very good. Yeah, they're that's second best Jesus. in the whole tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on from there. We've got Slovenia now, and again, similar to Lithuania, we'll just get into the team and player stats. Yeah. Um, I think we'll just like knock Luke out of the way again. We talked about it earlier with uh, leading the entire tournament. He yeah. is the points per game leader at 26 and a half points per game. Uh, Everything. <laughs> yeah. Not a shocker. He also leads Slovenia in rebounds, seven and a half yeah. a game. He also leads the assist category at six, uh, at about seven a game. Um, he's just, he's been incredible. His efficiency rating 27.8. Yeah. Second highest on the team. 18.2. Like, it's just that this is this is a Luca led team. This is what it, it almost always looks like. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, his second, his best counterpart right now is, uh, uh, what's his name? Clement. Clement Prepolic. Yeah. He's 14.8% uh, points per game. Yeah. He's been really good. Like, yeah. for a, you know, secondary score, this is kind of like, you know, that Jalen Brunson role where it's like, you know, I just need 15 to 20 from you. Yeah. That's all. 15 to 20, and we could be solid. So, no, definitely. Um, he's, he's looked good. Uh, but it's, again, it's kind of just like it, it can only go so far playing this kind of ball. But uh, we'll get into the team stats here. I Tenth. also mentioned, man, they're a very small country. Yeah, only like only, a couple only hundred thousand. Only two million people. Oh, million. Okay. So that's that's a very small country compared to these other countries. Because I, I, if I'm not incorrect, I believe – you think of a country like Serbia not even being that big. Yeah, Serbia is 6.5 million. Hmm. So that's a lot comparative. So, I mean, it's, it's a small country. Off. So to see them in this top, like, eight, that's very impressive to me because that's a very small country. Yeah. Um, Someone brought up a – I think it was it Lithuania that only has, like, a like sub a million population or something. They're very small also. I know that, yeah. Yeah. Um. No, they only, I mean, 2.8 million is not 8, 8 too million. many. Yeah, that's not too many, man. So, I mean, yeah. shout out to these countries with very little people because, yeah, that's, I mean, you look at USA, what, 300 million people? You look at, oh, geez. you look at a country like, um, who else? Italy, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to say probably over 50 million at least. I mean, 58 million in Italy. So, I mean, yeah, these countries are battling, man. There's a lot more people in it. So, I, to say the least, I'm very impressed with those two teams. And Germany, I'm guessing probably 70 million people. Let me check Germany. Because, I mean, I, I 83 million. Yeah, it's just like, I I don't know. I think that's uh, that's impressive to see countries, that very small countries, play this brand of basketball and play exceptionally well. Yeah, 100%. Uh, getting into Slovenia's team stats. Tenth. Tenth in points per game. They are not... Not putting bad. up too much. It's not the worst. It's not the best. 88 and a half points per game there. Yeah. Uh, shooting 47% from the field, which is not great. Uh, second lowest out of any, or actually, yeah, second lowest out of anybody left in the top eight. Uh, three point percentage, only 31 and a half percent. It's it's ugly right now, man. Yeah. From three. Uh, say they're tied in three point percentage with Italy at 34 or at 31.4%. Yeah. Um, and Italy is 20th in scoring. So that's not a team you really want to be tied with there. They're, they're um, 15th in rebounds, too, man. I mean, ouch. Yeah. And, and I mean, they're only shooting 75% from the free throw line. 
Slovenia again, it's just it's Luca versus all. Like, there's really no more to it. Like, they're, they're it, that's just how it is. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, Luca led team. Yeah, <laughs> man, they're yeah. yeah. They're, uh, I, I'm very impressed with how these stats show, and then they're still in this tournament alive and well. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's very interesting. Again, these brackets are just funky, and very, very I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Because again, we see Italy somehow being the number one team in that division, which is yeah. weird. So I, I don't know how that works, man. Yeah. Speaking of, however, we will get into Italy in their last game of the tournament. Um, yeah. This was against Puerto Rico in division 73 to 57. Yeah. That's the final score. Scary. Now we've been shitting on Italy for not being the best offensive team, but again, their points against is the lowest yep. in that division. And we see, Puerto Rico only putting up 57 points. That's Teams will average more than that at halftime yeah. in the NBA. Yeah. Dude, Most that, teams. Most teams will put up twice that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, looking at it, man, it, it was a it was a clunk fest from both sides of the ball, man. Yeah. It was not pretty. 41% from Italy to Puerto Rico's 37%. So, like you said, I know you mentioned they were one of the better defenses in this tournament. And they're slowing teams down and making them play their brand of basketball, I guess I would say. But even then, it's a really weird way. They, I mean, 26% from three from Italy to 23% from Puerto Rico. 50% from the free throw line for Italy to 78% from Puerto and Rico. only eight attempts for Italy from the line. <laughs> this is one of the worst, like, offenses in this tournament for Italy, man. They're a very weird team, man. I don't know how they're doing this. Uh, 20 assists to 14 for Italy. 19 rebound offensive rebounds for Italy, though, man. That is bad to five for Puerto Rico. So they killed them on the offensive glass. 29 defensive rebounds to 24. They killed them on the glass, man. 48 to 29 rebounds. So that's says a good amount. Six steals, six to six. Not bad. Tied there. Uh, three blocks for Puerto Rico to two for Italy. 11 turnovers for Puerto Rico to Italy's nine. Fouls, 16 to 13 for Italy. Fast break points, nine to two for Italy. Biggest lead, 16 to 4 for Italy. Points in the paint, 34 to 22 for Italy. And points from the bench, 31 to 19 for Italy. So they they led 35 minutes of this game also. I mean, just like seeing that, it's a it would seem to be a very slow game. And yeah. like you mentioned, they they play a very hard brand of defense. I'm it seems to me I have not watched too much Italy games. Um, neither have I, no. I, we'll see them on Tuesday. That's yeah, all I can say. We'll see them on Tuesday play a bit more, but I'm looking at their um their box score. It's it's a it's a bit diverse. It's um it's not horrible. You have Giampaolo Ricci with 15, 3, and 0. Gabrielle Procida, 3, 2, 0, and 0. You have uh Luca Severini, 3, 5, and 0. Simone Fontecchio, who's been actually phenomenal. I 12 and 12. The rebounding has been very impressive. He has been very good. Simone Fontecchio has been someone to look out for. Alessandro P- uh, Pohoya. 19 0 and 7. Um, Mahomet Deuf did pretty solid last game. He had a DMP. I, I don't know what's that, what that's about. Um, we have Marco Spisu, 8 4 and 6. Stefano Tunat, 15 1 and 0. Uh, Nicolo Melli, 7 12 and 2. And you have Luigi Detomi, 11 0 and 1. You have 1, 2, and 3. You have three guys, you have two DMPs, but you have, um, I'm kind of confused by that. I remember uh, Mahomut did decent last game, so I wonder if there's an injury or something there. But all I can say is Fontecchio has been phenomenal for them. Yeah, and again, sort of like Sante Aldama for the Grizzlies. Yeah. Uh, like Fontecchio, this could be, again, for the Nuggets, like or for hey. the Jazz, I'm sorry. Yeah. This could be a dude where, you know, his performance might see no. some more minutes. Yeah, man, I mean – I saw a bunch of jazz fans salty that they didn't add him to like the top 10 players in the tournament right now. He's been very good. Mm, yeah. But I and- him though, man, this team is very weird. Like I, I don't know how I feel about this team, man. They're, they play a yeah. very odd brand of basketball, but I mean, Hey, they're winning. So I, I can't say too much, man. They're, they're winning games, but exactly. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, not the worst team either. They're, they're solid in their own right. They're not bad. They just, they real. I mean, only 21 points total in the second half is just, that's oh. gonna kill you, man. That's uh, I don't care who you play, yeah. That's, that's not, like, that's yeah. not gonna do it. That's I mean, not gonna do it. highest score 13 points from Tremont Waters. Like, that's just, <laughs> yeah, that's you're not gonna win against anyone, 
Yeah, unless you're all of your team is 13, but yeah, and only one having – yeah, no, this is a – Well, just look at the field goal attempt, 72 for Italy, 54 for Puerto Rico. You yeah. only shot the ball 54 times. I know, man. This uh, – yeah. Wild. But, yeah. yeah, Italy, very interesting squad. Uh, We'll get into the team and player stats. We've already talked about it. They are 20th, 20th, yeah. I mean, Egypt, Mexico – Brazil, yeah. New Zealand, Puerto yeah, Rico, South not. Sudan, they're all scoring more than Italy. Italy only averages 80.1 points per game or 80.8 points per game. 44% from the field, 31% from three. Like the only bright spot so far is the 83% from the free throw line, which is one of the higher uh, percentages in the tournament. As yeah. well as their defensive performances. No, they, yeah, they've been like, on that and that. I don't really know if I want to chalk it up to defense yet, or if it's more so like every game they play is just like an utter brick fest. You know, I like it seems to be that way, man. Every score I've checked, I mean, they're they're top five in rebounding as a as a unit. Hmm. So that's something to look at. I mean, that might be a focal point of theirs. Is it's like okay, rebounding. we might we can't score, but if we can out rebound teams <laughs> and we could get extra opportunities, we might be able to sneak away with stuff. So. Yeah, man. Um, they play a weird brand of ball over there as of right now, from what I can tell. Yeah. I mean, their leading score right now, as we know, Simone Fontecchio, yeah. 18.4 points per game. Yeah. Also leading in efficiency rating at 16.4%. Um, rebounding. He's in second. First, Nico Melli, averaging yeah. seven and a half boards per game. Assist category. Number one is Marco Spisu, 5.6 points per game. Like, it's just a, it's an interesting squad. Four dudes and double figures here, yeah, uh, for the tournament. So I, I mean, it's the scoring is pretty spread, but this is just I, a. It's weird, man. I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm still very like I don't really want to. They keep winning, man. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I got nothing else to say bad about them. I mean, they keep winning. I, I, I don't know. Like you said, we'll have to see on Tuesday, man, because this is they they play a weird brand of basketball from all the games we've covered. Very low scoring almost every game. High rebounds, obviously. And then, yeah, I mean, the opponents usually score, like, very, like, very yeah. low. So maybe, maybe it is defensively they're special. But like I said, we're going to see a real test on Tuesday. I think yeah, I, probably I think the biggest tomorrow, test, yeah. I think USA probably cans them, but we'll see. You never know. Yeah. To continue, uh, Latvia versus Brazil. This was a 20-point blowout. Uh, yeah. Latvia is the eighth highest or eighth, well, the final team with the best worst odds. I guess if you're a half glass full, half glass empty, it just depends. Yeah. Uh, but they have the lowest odds technically of winning this entire tournament, shockingly, less than Italy. Yeah. Um, but they kind of beat the brakes off Brazil. And again, uh, relatively high scoring as far as this tournament goes 104 to 84. Yeah. Uh, we could get right into the stats. Yeah, man. So we have Latvia shooting 57% from the field. Another solid performance. 45% from, or I'm sorry, Latvia 57% to Brazil's 45%. 29% from uh, three for Brazil to 48%. Do you have the attempts on that? It's not coming up for me on this app. From the free throws? Uh, for the three-point percentage. For the three-point. Uh, seven of 24 for Brazil, 16 of 33 for Latvia. Yeah. That is a significant bigger amount of threes taken. 11 more or nine more made for Latvia, yeah. <laughs> and you have 100% from the free throw line for Latvia to 79% from Brazil. Not bad from Brazil, realistically. 24 to 21, Latvia, 24. They win that assist category. Offensive rebounds, Brazil, 13 to 5. Brazil wins that. 23 to 21 for defensive rebounds. Brazil wins that. And they win the rebounding total at 36 to 26. So this is one of the first games I've seen gone the other way of someone winning the rebounding battle in the whole FIBA tournament. Because rebounding is very big in uh, FIBA, I will say. From what I've seen in everything, usually the team that's going to get the more rebounds, and usually in the NBA also. But FIBA, I feel like more so the rebounding game is a lot more valuable than it is in the NBA today. And then from that, you have three steals to two, Latvia. Three blocks to one, Latvia. Turnovers, 11 to six for Brazil. It's a decent amount. Fouls, 24 to 19 for Latvia. That's a lot of fouls. Fast break points, five to three for Brazil. Biggest lead, 26 to two for Latvia. Points in the paint, 42 to 36 for Brazil. Points for the bench, 52 to 30 from Latvia. 
Points for turnovers, 18 to 7 for Latvia. Second chance points, Brazil, 15 to 8. And biggest scoring run, 11 to 7. And time leading, 36 minutes pretty much for Latvia. And like we mentioned, this is not a bad Brazilian, this is not a bad team for Brazil. Very solid. They've been pretty okay the whole tournament. So Lafayette is going in there and beating the brakes off of them. That's I, I don't I don't I don't know if I could say the same. I, I, I don't know. I'd be interested to see this team play Italy because I don't see how this team would have worse odds than Italy personally. Because yeah. now we go to the scoring and it is very diverse for minutes distribution and such. So you have Andres Grizulis, who is playing 30 minutes off the bench and giving you 24 at three and five. Rodion Karuks, NBA past NBA player, 21 minutes, seven, five, and three. Davis Bertans, 26 minutes, 14, three, and one. Uh, his uh, Dyrus Bertans did not play this game, DNP. He's been barely solid this whole tournament, also. Yeah. Roland Smiths, 19 minutes, 10, four. Uh, Art- Artur Stratunes, 16 minutes, seven, and two. And you have. Igor Scale, 21 minutes, 4, 2, and 5. Artur, uh, Arturs Karuks, 17 minutes, 12, 1, and 1. Arturs Zagars, 19 minutes, 7, 2, and 3. And Krister Zorix, 22 minutes, 9, 2, and 6. So uh, just a very diverse um, box score for Latvia, to say the least, because, man, that is a good amount of minutes distribution to everyone and a lot of production from everyone because, wow. Yeah, five in double digits. That's, that, uh, yeah. that's impressive. And then just to think some of these guys came off the bench and did this, it's 30 off the benches. Yeah. 24 off the bench was pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good amount, man. And I mean, looking at Brazil, there's some very solid players from there. Yago Santos, 14, three and four. Guy Santos, nine, one and zero. Uh, you have Bruno Cabalco, who's been very solid this whole tournament. One of the yeah. better players throughout the whole thing, 27 and two. So it's not like, these guys have been slouches. And, I mean, Marcelino Heretis has been great the whole tournament also. Had kind of a bad game here, 4-0 and 9. But he's been pretty solid for them also. But just to say, I they have a very solid team. It's not like a it's not like a team you're going to beat down usually. So I, this is pretty impressive to me for Latvia. I, right. A very, a team that's kind of, yeah, they, they're an underdog, I'd say, to say the least. They're, no one's expecting them to do too much. I mean, this is the team with Chris Steps too, without Chris Steps. Yeah, with that, with yeah. him playing, it's gonna be it's just gonna be a whole different outlook for that team. Significantly better team. So to say Shout that, out to Huertas, though. Nine assists off the bench is pretty yeah. cool. No, so, he yeah, he's been doing yeah. really solid the whole tournament. He's been pretty he's been pretty solid for Brazil. I won't I've seen him do a few things. He will just never live down that Lakers meme ever. It just will not happen. Just shuck the ball over his head. head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know uh, <laughs> oh yeah i think the interesting thing about this are the standings for this division because this is a that probably the most comp division we've seen canada latvia spain and brazil i mean you've got yeah. the past champs canada who's the second best team latvia one of the finalists yeah. and brazil who's no slouch themselves all yeah. four positive records four and one four and one three and two three and two all positive differentials 110 40 plus 60 plus 19 all with positive points for and uh, points against. Like, this is uh, – it's one of the most comp divisions, if not the most comp division in this entire tournament. No. And it, to see Latvia play the way they do, again, without Kristaps Porzingis yeah. is very, very impressive. And to end it on a 20-point blowout against an in-division opponent, that's uh, that's something to be proud Statement. of. So. Statement win, man. Yeah, definitely. They're – I believe they're another team. If I'm not wrong, they might be even smaller population wise. Yeah, 1.8 million people, man. Jeez. So like these teams, man, they're they're small countries, but they they play ball, man. I give them that. Yeah. And uh, to get into the team stats, Latvia eighth in scoring, averaging 90 points per game, yeah. shooting 52 percent from the field, which is one of the best percentages, uh, yeah. field goal wise. Shooting forty percent from three, one of the best from the uh, in the tournament, and only about seventy seven percent from the free throw line. But overall, offensively, they've just been incredible. Um, again, they're a very diverse squad. They've just got so much talent across the board. Uh, I mean, if we look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six players on this roster average double figures. Yeah. That's the first team we've seen average that like, have that many guys in double figures. I don't even think the U.S. has that many dudes in double figures. Mm-mm. One, two, three, f- only four dudes for the U.S. are average in double figures. So 
Um, they've just had a fantastic game. I mean, leading the way efficiency uh, efficiency rating wise, Art uh, is it Arthur's Grizulis? I think it's his name. Correct. Uh, I could be wrong. I hope that's his name. Andres Grizulis or which one? Uh, Andres Grizulis. Yes, uh, you're right. He's uh, he's leading in player efficiency rating yeah. uh, at sixteen point eight. Leading in the rebounding category, uh, Rodion's Kuroks averaging six uh, boards per game. In the assist category, you've got Arter Zagars averaging five and a half. Like, yeah, they're just they're doing a great job as a team. And like again, I just don't. How on earth are they below Italy? I don't get it. I um, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I'm guessing maybe they rank the. I guess they don't realistically have a star. I guess Italy would be Fontecchio's. I I don't know. I don't know how they do this because. I personally don't see a universe where this team doesn't blow out Italy, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I it's kind of confusing because I don't see, I, I really don't see a universe where Serbia is not a significantly better team than Italy. So I guess it's like points against they have their, uh, they have 410 points against, but it's like they have 454. <laughs> so it's like, are we I, really gonna, they're still positive on that mark as well. Are we really gonna like, I don't yeah. know. I, I, yeah, it's confusing, man. I, I so it's almost petty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, and then we they they have a big test against them though. They're playing Germany on Wednesday, so yeah, one of the best defensive teams. Yeah, probably yeah in this that's, that's a big so. test. Very big test for them to see. I'm I'm interested to see that. I I'm interested I, in I, seeing Roland Schmitz. He's been yeah, like the he's, been good. I, he's probably been the best player on this team in my opinion. Like no, he, he had a couple games where he just went. He was he went off. So. And, and hey, Bur- I mean, I don't know what's going on with uh, let me look that up really quick, man, because he's been a really big focal point of that team, Dyrus. Um, Burkin. yeah, um, what's going on with him, man? He uh, it's... you know, it's not really, I it looks like he played in the NBA himself, hmm. okay. Uh, he played Pelicans, okay. Interesting. Cyrus Berton. I don't remember him. Is that recent or? 2018 19. Okay. Not, not too old. Oh, not too long okay. He's out of the whole thing. Oh, really? We'll be out for five weeks missing that. Yeah. Okay. What that's happened? pretty low, man. Uh, he tore his left hamstring. Yeesh. So it's not wow. too bad of an injury, but it's bad for the big the time self. Yeah. That's, that's too bad. I'm glad to hear it's nothing too crazy serious. That's, yeah, no ACL wild. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But that's still a shame because he was one of their best players. Wow. Yeah. He had himself a series. So, yeah, again, yeah. even more impressive to see that they're still winning without him. Um, yeah. Big time. Hopefully, this, I mean, I imagine it's going to come back to bite him because he's averaging over 10 points a game. So, yeah. to lose one of your biggest scorers is, it's always tough. But um, Latvia does look like a kind of a powerhouse. So, yeah. No, it's, definitely. Um, I, yeah. I, We'll see them next time around, man. I, do, they qualify for the Olympics, right? Oh, yeah. They're yeah. There. So, hey, hopefully Chris Stapps can play next year. You yeah. Get Dyrus back, and hey, you never know. They, there might they, be more. Like, we'll see. I mean, I don't know if anyone from Lafayette was in this current draft that just happened or if next year there's going to be more guys from Lafayette in that draft. Like, um, that team could look insane going into the Olympics, so. They, no, I I'm with you on that, man. They have a lot of uh, they have a lot of talent right there. Cause it's a, uh, oh, Andres Biedrins is Latvian. I never knew that. Warriors legend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they have they have a lot of yeah. I'm for they're a very small country. I believe they're still to the west of Russia. They're very small. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No, they they're a tough team, man. They're a very tough team. Yeah. But yeah. to uh to close out this video, we just wanted to do uh just say, you know going over briefly the games for the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, starting things off, it's gonna be Lithuania versus Serbia. Big um, game. I I get yeah, that's that's probably gonna be like the probably that's, the best matchup so yeah. far the week? Uh, yeah. in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the most entertaining one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the two closest uh, in competitive levels. So yeah, and um, that's a great matchup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. High powered offenses, so that'll be fun to see. Uh, following that, at five forty a.m., the U.S. is going to be playing Italy, and we've both talked about that's in our opinion that's a blowout. We'll see, we'll see but it <laughs> yeah. be, if, if USA doesn't blow them out, then it's a shame. I will say that. 
Yeah, Lithuania yeah. makes sense. Yeah, Italy. Whoa. Yeah. Um, then at one forty-five a.m. on Wednesday, Germany versus Latvia. That's yeah. going to be an interesting game. Um, both teams spread scoring. Both teams can defend. Germany is a better defensive team. It's so. going to be interesting to see how that ends up turning out. Um, I, to me, it's like, do who's going to stop Schroeder? Like, yeah. Do they have a guard that can really go one on one with Schroeder? I don't know. He's been yeah. Um, I mean, he's just he's been on one. He's on one, man. Yeah. Uh, and then. Following that, the final game of the first four, Canada at 5.30 uh, a.m. on Wednesday will be playing Luka and Team Slovenia. And again, that looks like it's going to be a blowout. However, more so than the U.S.-Italy game, I think Luka, of anyone, has a better chance of like upsetting a team. So that's going to be interesting. But Canada is just such a defensive juggernaut that I, I don't know. I imagine they throw Brooks on him, but you never know. They have a lot of Brooks, RJ. They've got guys. Yeah, they have guys to throw on him, man. So, yeah, they're probably gonna throw him off his game a bit. We'll we'll see. It would be interesting to see if they kept it close and they. they Yeah, that'd be interesting, man. I think that would that take a little bit of sweat off of USA's back. They gotta. If they Slovenia were the ones to take out Canada, because I I don't as of right now I don't know if Canada, I don't know if USA wants to play Canada, man. They they they. They're a bit uh they I was a bit disappointed with that Lithuania game. I thought they would go undefeated the tournament, but I mean hey, Lithuania yeah. tough, so you never know. Yeah, and I I think like if Slovenia knocks off Canada, Steve Kerr has our full round of the playoffs against Luca, and we've yeah. seen Steve Kerr pretty much just the Wiggins a- just annihilate Luca. Yeah. The boxing <laughs> one with the oh. With Andrew, with Andrew Wiggins on the majority of the game. And- well, and just exposing him defensively. It's just like, I mean, that entire series was just hilarious. It was like anybody, I mean, and I was one of those people that was like, I think Dallas could beat the Warriors because it's like, I just didn't know. I, I didn't think Steve Kerr was going to throw the kitchen sink at this man. I thought it was just going to be, yeah, we'll put Wiggins on him and that's it. But no, he just threw of- everyone at, he gave him Gary, he gave him yeah. Wiggins, he gave him Draymond. I mean, uh, or not Gary. I think Gary was hurt at that point, but he it was like, yeah, like, of gave him the whole kitchen sink. Yeah. Oh, it was definitely a lot of dream. I do remember a lot of dream. I remember a lot of Wiggins and you know, I don't, I don't really, I think it was the majority of those two. I, I remember a lot. Yeah. Clay Maybe. saw some looks on him. Otto got some looks. Otto, like, yes. Yes, it, yes, yes. Steve Kerr did a great job at just uh, at spreading out who guards Luca and just make like, again, when you, you put a guy win. And exactly. <laughs> And you want to make it so that he doesn't get comfortable out there. If you just put him up against one dude consistently, no, yeah. he's going to eat because he's going to get used to it and he's going to find a way to expose it. But if you just keep giving him different looks, bigger body, smaller body, skinny, bigger, stronger, less than like he has to continue to change and always stay on his toes. So um, it's going to be an interesting uh, go of things. But yeah, tomorrow morning, 145. Yeah, early, man. Uh, very early. I still don't know if these are going to be on ESPN or anything. We're getting we're past the group stage, so I hope yeah. they are. But I think they would be. I'm very sure they would be. Yeah. If not, that sucks. Um, but uh, like we've been doing, if they if they're not there, then we'll just watch the highlights and try and go over things as best as possible. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for today. Very feeble oriented. Nothing really going on around the league, uh, as far as anything newsworthy goes so uh that's gonna be it we'll be back either thursday or sunday again with more uh, with more fiba uh more fiba stuff the final game of the quarterfinals is on saturday so we probably will do this on sunday i think that's probably the best day um definitely and yeah that's gonna do it thank you all for watching thanks dom again for showing up as always in the moment hoops in the description Uh, Go check his channel out. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you like these videos, also leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And like I said, we'll be back Sunday with more FIBA content. So, uh, yeah, CultureCast, episode 12. Have a good uh, rest of your week and peace.